Hey everyone, Dr. Jack Gordy, and in this video, I'll be continuing my discussion about macro parasites, and I'm going to take you through an example. I'm going to take you through the helminth worm that's called Ascaris. Um, and um, at first, in this video, I'm going to take you through the biology, and then in the next video, I'm going to take you through the pathology, the, the disease-causing mechanisms of the worm. Now, it's a round worm, um, and uh, it's physically round. When we look at it, it's quite a round worm. Now, there are other worms, like tapeworms, which are flat. Now, this image here is taken from the large intestine, but Ascaris actually prefer to be in the small intestine. But I'll jump into that a bit more in detail um, when I go through the life cycle. So let's jump into it. Where does Ascaris sit on the global deaths per year scale? So here's some diseases, E. coli, which is mostly diarrhea, influenza, malaria, staphylococcal, coccus infections, uh, fungal infections, COVID-19 is 4 million a year, so it's way off the scale. Where does Ascaris sit? It sits quite low, probably around 60,000, but again, I mentioned in the previous video, these numbers are very hard to estimate because of very few people die directly from it and they die, die more indirectly from it from things like malnutrition or immune suppression. So how many people in the world have it? Well, roughly one in six people have a Scarus infection, so it is a massively prevalent infection. So how do you get it? If one in six people have got it, how do you get it? Now I've got a guy scratching his butt there. Uh, that's not really how you get Ascaris. There are some worms that lay their eggs directly in the, uh, the lining of the anus. And so scratching is one of the major ways that they are transmitted. But Ascaris isn't made, mostly transmitted by, by butt scratching. I just sort of put it there for a bit of fun. Let's go through the life cycle to figure out how you get it. So here we go. We've got a person eating a carrot and that carrot has some Ascaris eggs on it. Um, and they're going to swallow that down. It's going to go through the stomach, down into the intestine, into the small intestine. Now in the small intestine, these eggs are going to develop into a larval form of the Ascaris worm. Now this worm is going to be quite small and be able to get into blood vessels. So it's going to tunnel through the wall of the intestine and get to the vein, which is the portal vein, which then goes up to the liver and then round out into the rest of the circulation. What's their goal? Their goal is to get to the lungs. So once they get to the capillaries of the lungs, after going to the liver and the heart, they go out to the lungs. They then can um, crawl into the airspace of the lungs. Now once they're there, they can crawl and get coughed up and the cilia of the airway tract, our cilia, can sweep the little larvae worm up and it goes up to the top and then you might do a little... <coughs> <coughs> just a little something comes up to the back of your throat and you swallow it back down again. So the worm has tunneled its way from the intestine into the lungs, up into your mouth, now you've swallowed it back down again and it goes back into the intestine. Once it's done that little root, it will um, develop into the adult worms. Now the adult worms can be quite big and quite long lived, um, sometimes years in your intestine and they can get up to around 15 centimeters, sometimes bigger. They're not quite as big as those giant tapeworms that can occur. Now, the uh, Ascaris have regular male and females. The, the female produces eggs, the males produce sperm. And the sperm does this great little crawly thing rather than have a tail or, a, or, or swimming. I'm not sure of the evolution of that. I suspect it might be something to do with the distances it has to travel. Not very far compared to um, mammalian sperm, for example. Now, once that egg is fertilized, many eggs don't get fertilized, but some do. And once they, uh, uh, all those eggs, the infertilized and fertilized eggs, will get swept out of the intestine down into the uh, poo. Um, and that might go into the soil and then recontaminate the food. So fecal contamination is a problem if you don't wash your hands going out to the bathroom and you do scratch your bum, maybe a deeper scratch. Um, that can cause problems, but primarily soil transfer is the major way that Ascaris is spread. Now, so let's have an overlook. This is a big picture of the life cycle. So we've got one, you swallow the eggs, it goes down to the intestine, they hatch into larvae, they go into the bloodstream, they go up to number three, which is your lungs. You then cough them back up and they go back down into the intestine over here to number five, where they develop and mature, lay eggs, reproduce, and then the eggs come out the bottom and then you go back to one. Now you might look at this life cycle and just go, what is what the heck is going on with this part of it? All of that just to get back into the intestine. If, if you were um, Darwin, you'd be like, 
why though why you're just going to end up back in the intestine well the truth is is it's very difficult and expensive to stay in the intestine it is a low oxygen environment um, and so the worms actually have to have a specialized form of hemoglobin to strip oxygen off our oxygen. So it binds it much more tightly than our hemoglobin does because it needs to pull the oxygen um, back out of the extracellular space. Um, you need to constantly be swimming. The intestine is undergoing peristalsis, which is shoving um, your, your, your digested food down the lumen of the intestine so the worms have to constantly be swimming against the current which is energy expensive the worms are also at constant threat of digestion there's digestive enzymes in the intestine so they have to secrete things to inhibit that um, and so all of these processes are incredibly expensive it's much easier to get out you go into the blood it's rich in oxygen you go around to the lungs very high in oxygen and you're not facing those other challenges so it gives you a bit of a break, and then you can come back down and mature. So that's the leading hypothesis. And they have blocked the uh, worms from going, going through that pathway, um, through the bloodstream and into the lungs. They've genetically engineered them, so they cannot do that. And what happens is the worms do mature into adults, even without going into through the lungs. But they're smaller and weaker adults. So it does seem to give them a survival advantage getting out of that harsh environment of the intestine um, just for a little bit of their life cycle. But it's such an interesting life cycle. Um, I, I love evolution. It figures out all these things that you think are, are counterintuitive. Right, so up in the next video, I'm going to take you through how does all of this actually cause disease? Where do the problems come in?